dormía y soñé que la vida era belleza. Desperté y advertí que era deber. I'm going to tell you a true story. I know it is true because I was there. It is the story of the first 50 years of the life of our son, Sheldon David Kahn. It starts the day he was born, January 27, 1965, in Mexico City at about eight o'clock in the morning. His parents, Abraham and Elena, were very excited and happy, but also very tired and sleepy because his arrival was supposed to be the previous night and he kept them waiting all night long. He, Abraham, biting his nails and she, Elena, screaming loudly at the customary intervals. He spent his first school days at the Jewish school in Mexico from kinder and preschool to elementary and on to secondary school. At about the age of eight, David showed that he was a real extrovert who loved to make speeches in public places. Here, we see him making a presentation in his classroom on the subject of early animal life on planet Earth. Hola, muy buenas tardes, señores y señoras, damas y caballeros. El maravilloso mundo de los animales. Los animales son seres vivos que, que caminan para buscar su comida porque no, no, no son como las plantas. ¿Se acuerdan en la conferencia pasada que dije que las plantas que, que las plantas hacían su comidita en las hojas? Los animales no. Los animales se mueven para buscar su comidita. Todos los animales están hechos de ladrillitos células, como, como están aquí las plantas y toda la clase de animales y los seres humanos. El primer animal que, que existió en el mundo era solo una célula y se llamaba Protosauro. Apareció en los océanos de en los océanos del Atlántico. Eh, estoy metiendo algo porque se me olvidó. Como está acá. Y esos les empezaron a salir más células y más células y más células y se formaron los pescados. Muchas gracias por, por, por atender a mi conferencia. Y, y no dejar a sus niños correr y, y gracias por venir a oír nuestra conferencia. At age eight, he showed his talent for becoming an entrepreneur and a sharp business person. Playing with his Lego set and drawings on paper, He created an imaginary city and called it Megapo, with its own currency, the Mogdi, and streets, police, fire stations, and everything else found in a real city, including imaginary residential house uh, developments, and sold individual plots to his sister, schoolmates, on credit, of course, as no one had Mogdis. At about the same time, he started his first real business. He noticed that his grandmother, Doña Gumer, 
sold in her store loaves of challah bread every Friday. He would buy them for five pesos and sold them for eight to our neighbors. This time, his profit of three pesos was in real money, not in imaginary moglis. In those years, Mark Spitz, the American swimmer, holder of the record of most gold medals in Olympic Games, came to Mexico and visited the Jewish sports center. David was a member of the competition swimming team of the club and took part in the reception committee. Because he spoke English quite fluently, he acted as the unofficial host and guide of his idol. His pay was Mark Spitz's personal autograph on a photo with him. His bar mitzvah was a beautiful event. He read the Torah directly in Hebrew, making no mistakes. And in front of most of his family, schoolmates, and his many good friends. In the middle of the 1970s, all of the cable television owners decided to form an association, which they called Hanitech, which are the initials for Cámara Nacional de la Televisión por Cable. We had an internal magazine, and in order to give life to that magazine, David thought of creating a little character, a caricature, and he named it Cablito. After finishing secondary school, he transferred to the American school in Mexico to study preparatory which is the equivalent to senior high school in the United States. All courses were in English, and that would prepare him for admission at a college in the United States. After graduating from high school, he and I spent about two weeks the next summer driving a rented car to check out all the major universities in the state of Texas. Finally, he chose the University of Texas in Austin. I guess because there were more beautiful girls in shorts walking in that campus. He registered the following fall as a freshman with a double major in business administration and computer sciences and a minor in architecture. In his second year in college, he came to our home in Acapulco to spend the usual spring break vacation and invited some of his fraternity friends. There was no room in our house for all kids, so he took him to one of the best hotels in Acapulco that was being managed by a friend of our family and gave them an excellent rate. 
They all had a wonderful time, and upon returning to school, they told everybody what a good time they had had. The word got around, and pretty soon he was being asked by many students to include him also next year. He was then known in UT campus as a spring break guy. For the next four years, he handled thousands of spring breakers, not only to come to Acapulco, but also to Cancun, contracting for bulk prices in hotels and airline back-to-back -back charters. At the end of the spring break season, he could count his profits in hundreds of thousands of dollars, which would enable him to buy office and commercial real estate in downtown Austin. After he graduated with a bachelor's degree, he wanted to further his education and applied for admission at some of the most reputable graduate schools. Some accepted him, but he chose to remain in the University of Texas Business Graduate School so that he could continue to run his part-time spring break business simultaneously. Two years later, he graduated with honors and uh, sadly he had to say goodbye to his fun-filled college years and spring break trips. In addition to this, he was also spending time helping in his family's cable television business. In 1990, we had to take a major decision to accept an American cable company to become a minority partner and assist in making available to us the very large amounts of capital and technology required to offer in addition to video, telephony, data, and internet services, which by the way, was named Megapo Comunicaciones de México S.A.D.C.B. Remember the name Megapo? David was a key negotiator with the lawyers of UIH and concluded the merger with a very good agreement. He sold his University Beach Club company then and returned to Mexico to take his position as vice president, member of the board of directors, and future CEO in training. Five years later, we sold the entire company and ceased our involvement in the cable industry in Mexico. David decided that to return to the United States to take care of his real estate investments. Back in the United States, a major change happened in the life of David. He found the girl of his dreams, Andrea Koplovitz and married Harry in Miami on December 9, 2003. Today, in his 50th birthday, we can say that their marriage is full of understanding and pride. He has a beautiful family that gives him strength in rough times, and he always has time to share with Andrea and his children. After a year of trying to make their home in Miami, he decided to move back to Austin, Texas, where he still had major investments and would be then involved in real estate opportunities which were developing there. 
In the meantime, David and Andrea have been blessed with three wonderful and beautiful children. The oldest, named Jonathan, is a boy now age 10. Ali, a girl, now age 8. And a little baby, 6 months of age, named Jack. In spite of being very busy with his real estate investments and time-demanding business obligations, he spends a lot of time with Andrea and his children, traveling with them frequently. David is very close to his sister Sandra and her husband, also named David, as well as their own children, Ilan and Ariela. They have all played a very important part of his life. We all form a very happy family. Sandra has been married more than 20 years and David Kahn has been married almost 12. Before concluding, it is necessary to give credit to what credit is due. David's mother was the co-sponsor of this video and provided all the pictures and the images that you're seeing. Listen to her words carefully. David, hace 50 años llegaste al mundo y nos diste una felicidad enorme, comparable solo a la que sentimos Abraham y yo cuando nació tu hermana Sandra. Hoy damos gracias a la naturaleza que todos estos años que cumples están llenos de felicidad y la compartes con tu familia, con nosotros y con todos tus amigos. Dormía y soñé que la vida era belleza. Desperté y advertí que era deber. <risa>